No idea if we're uh, live yet. Is it supposed to tell us? I don't remember. We'll see. I don't remember if it works or not. Who? I don't want to check the on phone. The backside. It looks like we're live. Yeah. How come <laughs> I can't see it? Hit the refresh button. Hit the refresh button. Obviously, we're still new to this uh, Caspi Live. Oh, look thing. at that. We're live. What do you know? Do you find it? Actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> We we had producer Sarah in here, it would be fine. Yeah. I think we need to do the, got the uh, day off. Yeah, we need to do the standard book deal face thing. Like, Actually we're live, Mike. We're yeah. good. Yeah? Yeah. We got we got two. Oh, viewers. Look at that. We're live. <laughs> Just like that. That's what I was Perfect. looking for. Right there. So we can do a little full screen, pay attention. Alright, here we go. Alright. Right. So a little bit of a you know, bad start <laughs> once again. Uh, hello, welcome to the first uh, Cal Speed Live of 2019. We're going to cover the events of January. Uh, we're going to uh, preview what's coming up uh, in February. Uh, as a lot of you guys know me, I'm Mike Smith. And joining me, of course, is the Derek Esquivel. Um, you guys may have seen us try this uh, once before in December. We talked about kind of the year as a whole um, and then previewed what was going to be coming up in the year as a whole, uh, specifically in January. Um, I plan on doing one of these things in uh, the last Thursday of every month and if all goes well you guys jump on here you ask us some questions we answer a few things just kind of talk about things a little bit we're gonna try to keep an eye on the chat again it's just uh, Derek and I today producer Sarah taking the uh, the day off um, but again love to have you guys here uh, hanging out with us ask questions we'll try to answer them and then uh, yeah, just kind of have, uh, have a good time um, for tonight, we're going to be uh, talking a little bit of the uh, the sport carding stuff for the most part. That's all we had in January. We were on uh, Grande counterclockwise uh, just this last weekend, but we started off on Classico counterclockwise, and we actually had the first rounds of our sport carding stuff, the Sprint Series, as well as the Ironman and uh, Super Series, all on that. Uh, and then we did have uh, the Sprint Series round number two on uh, Grande. So we're going to recap that kind of stuff, and then we'll jump into the uh, the preview for the next month where we have a ton of competition carding that's just going to be awesome out here. Um, but actually, first up, we kind of want to talk about the track, um, kind of how the updates were accepted by everybody, and uh, kind of what you guys thought. Um, so if, if you guys do, you want to jump on here and kind of go, hey, here's what I thought about the track, questions about the track, things like that. Uh, obviously, if you started coming here that first weekend on Friday, <laughs> was busy for Friday, but it's also yeah. pretty bloody slick. And Sunday was more of the same. It's definitely different now. Uh, Derek, you're here every Sunday. Uh, don't talk about this last Sunday, and we'll get yeah, to that yeah. in a second. But just how, from your standpoint and the feedback you've been getting from people, how how's the track changed uh, overall? I was super happy with the feedback, even when the track was at its slickest on its first day. Um, Everyone, I think, was kind of on the same page, like, yeah, well, it just got put in, so right. we can't really expect too much out of it. Um, people definitely did like the the top half of the track, the way we changed it up and whatnot. Right. Obviously, the rest of the track kind of changed as well, too, with all of the um, the surface change and whatnot, but people definitely like the new layout, and um, as the grip's slowly starting to come in, people are, enjo are uh, enjoying it more and more, but the nice part is, it is happening, so... Right. But from the first day to now, it's definitely been a good step, but people are happy with the direction we went for the change and whatnot. Yeah, and, and having that grip get better is definitely something that uh, that is really nice to have. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're a longtime CalSpeak person, you know we had uh, issues a few years back, and certainly there was some of those shades uh, that, that might, yeah. like, some people were like, oh, is it going to be like that again? Uh, but uh, it was good. A lot of you guys hung out uh, and like it's gonna get better. It's gonna get better You guys were definitely positive and we appreciate it um, Because yeah, it's way better this last Sunday obviously was really busy, but the grip felt Really pretty damn good uh, Derek and I were out here running a little bit of KA stuff and you could actually start feeling the grip come in like you know Cal speed uh, is supposed to be we were on the grande counter layout um, and Was really nice to feel Long Beach right out of the gates a lot better horseshoe a lot better um, and even the really, really slick spots like the bus stop section uh, coming out of Silk, those things were a lot better. So that was really cool to see. Um, the uh, One of the things that I, I really want to uh, point out and what was really appreciated was some of the great feedback that you guys are giving us. You guys come out here and you guys would do practice and we definitely kind of had an open feel to it with barriers and stuff like that. We definitely have less barriers, less banded barriers, less barriers in general. 
the vision is a lot easier. You can really see what's going on with the line of sight. Um, but those first few days, it was very open and we didn't have a lot of delineation going on. Um, uh, your guys' feedback, uh, along with that and our own testing, kind of figured out where basically everything should be. And by the time we got to like this last weekend, it's pretty damn close. I mean, from your standpoint, Derek, uh, what were some of the big, big feedback points and what were the things that we changed uh, along the way? Well, ever since uh, day one, people were really asking track limits and whatnot. Right. Obviously, the track edges are now painted, and the track edge is a lot more um, obvious compared to what we used to have. But a lot of people exceeding and going four off in some spots. Um, the biggest two were up top between turns five and four at the top of the hill in front of the grid, mm -hmm. and then the final corner, the last left-hander taking you onto the front straight. Um, definitely a kind of a combination of people just cheating it and letting the cart come out and also the lack of grip so right. a little bit of a combination we did add those barriers in and it's just those uh blue scribners that you see at all the apexes so it's all the familiar uh, visuals that you'll see around the rest of the course but mike and i uh going back with a lot of back and forth with a lot of the paddock and doing our own testing we think the track's pretty much set on where we'd want to have it even when we go racing so I think that was the biggest thing was just people worried about track limits. Yeah. Everyone was pretty much understanding uh, the surface and the grip, but track limits was a big question mark we kept getting. Yeah, and I think one of the nice things is, is at least with those Scribners, uh, I mean, I know nobody likes having uh, those, hitting those bandits, right? right? That's That's been definitely a point of contention. I mean, essentially, it's a parking lot. It's a lot like a street course. It's got that temporary feel to it in a lot of different aspects. But there's curbs all the way around the joint now. Um, and we did take away a lot of those those banded tires. So you still don't want to hit a barrier, but hitting those plastics are a little bit nicer than hitting the bandits. Um, yeah. So that was that was a nice change to see. Um, but go ahead and uh, and, and hit the uh, the nail on it here with this last Sunday. It was stupid. Yeah. <laughs> it was huge. Uh, we don't typically out here a really big Sunday is going to be in the sixty to seventy driver range. Um, we've been pretty consistent in the 60 range uh, throughout the year, uh, aside from a couple of hiccups here with the, uh, our, our POS system and whatnot. Um, it, pretty normal deal. This last Sunday, we had well over 100 drivers. It was not your typical uh, practice day. I want to really thank everybody for their patience. Uh, we had a lot of uh, little issues, uh, and we're actually going to make a few changes uh, to try to make that a little bit nicer. Um, like I was telling a few other people, being in line is one thing, being in line when you are watching go-karts go around the track, that that kind of blows. Right. So we're going to make a couple of changes. The first change we're going to make is uh, opening an hour early uh, for the gates. We're going to open up uh, those busy Sundays, not this Sunday. Uh, we don't think with the weather uh, that it's going to be all that busy. Also, I think it's Super Bowl, so yeah, I don't so think it's going to be crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're going to open an hour early, at 8 o'clock for the gates. Still going to go hot at 9. Um, and then also we're changing the POS system that we're using uh, to the same one that we used during LAKC Saturday. So things should flow a lot quicker in that regard. Um, so yeah, the gates are going to open at 9, get the registration going. The track's still going to go hot at 9, though. So For this got, weekend. For, and then 8 o'clock oh, is going to be the yeah. gates after that. So normal hours for this week and after this week, and we'll start going into the, the new hours. But yeah, track's still going to go hot at 9. But after this week, and we'll definitely get the gates opening up uh, an hour earlier try to get the line flowing through and right. you know, really make it a little bit better for you guys. Yeah, and uh, just a, a quick reminder too, it is 2019. One of the things that did slow things down uh, was people not being prepared. Uh, like, oh man, it's New Year, I gotta sign all this stuff. So know that that's gonna be part of it too, Like, if, uh, for, especially the notary stuff. Make sure you guys have that dialed in, we'll get you on the list to get you flowing a lot quicker. Um, and that being said too, uh, we really appreciate you guys trying to make sure you have everything ready to rock and, and, and make things happen. Um, big shout out to my wife who was actually working the, uh, the the counter that day, and we're still married, so that's nice. Uh, she was not uh, not loving that, but I appreciate it, your guys' patience again. And uh, and one of the other things too is actually the on track stuff. Uh, Derek and I were talking about afterwards. Uh, we typically split the groups up as they get larger. Um, one of the things that we typically do is go shifter, non-shifter is our yeah. first split, or our second split actually, it's uh, open and then senior novice, and then after that we'll go shifter, non-shifter, but what we saw was actually a lot of KAs, and Derek, you actually made a KA only group this last Sunday. Yeah, those uh, KAs have definitely been popping up a lot, more and more often, um, and just kind of creature habit, I saw a lot of an open, I saw a lot of drivers out in open, 
went to the shifter non shifter split and after uh, an hour, another hour or so I'm like you know what we have 20 plus KAs right now so right. threw them all in their own group so that might become more of a regular thing too uh, still a lot of X-series and shifters coming out no doubt if we need the session we're going to give it to them but if the KA numbers keep showing like they are in these open practice days or KAs uh, VLR whatever have you um, we'll probably throw them their own session as well Right, and that's a good point too. It's it's hundred cc tag. It's really what we're talking right. about. You know, I I say K. We're saying I K because we're driving. It. That's yeah, why stuck it's in my head. Stuff. But yeah, any of the hundred cc stuff, jumping in that session uh, because just a lot of them. Um, but that's that is new. That was not a thing that yeah. happened uh, in years past. But we're seeing the non shifter stuff start to break up into in these two different entities. So um, those are the big changes that we're uh, we're looking to do uh, to try to make those Sundays a little bit better. Uh, in terms of getting the max amount of seat time. We'll try to make those breaks when we do. At the end of the day, with that many people, yeah, you're probably going to get a session an hour. Um, this last time we had seven sessions, yeah. 10 minutes per, so it's a little bit closer to an LAKC. Um, uh, I do want to point out, everyone is supposed to be doing that one session hour. If you're someone who's trying to sneak out extra sessions, other people notice it and they're not big fans of that, uh, and they do let me or Derek know, uh, usually yeah. Derek, because uh, he's the, the man on the, the mission that day. If we, if we catch you doing that kinds of stuff, we're gonna we're gonna pull you off. I mean, just kind of think about it as far as a sportsmanship situation. If you think about it. If you saw someone else getting a little extra, you wouldn't like it. We'd appreciate it if you didn't do stuff like that. So we don't have to pull you off. Uh, but that's really all I'm gonna say about double dipping. Make sure you pick your session and do your session. Uh, certainly, if you're a kid cart, a cadet, you're kind of stuck. You gotta do what you gotta do. Um, but the adults, let's make sure we're in the correct session. Uh, everybody gets that one per hour. Um, that's kind of really all I've got for the the track changes and stuff like that. Obviously, we're on Grande Counter this uh, this weekend, uh, and going into the next few, uh, we will change after that. But uh, yeah, I mean, as far as the new track goes, I'm pretty damn excited about it. I love the fact the grips coming up. Yeah. The last section coming on the straightaway is a hell of a lot of fun. It worked out on paper, uh, or it looked good on paper, and it worked out pretty good. I love that thing in the in the hundred uh, cc. Um, and the source of the 206, the sport car has been a ton of fun as well. But uh, moving on from that, let's jump into the, the recap uh, of this last month. The very first event that took to the track, aside from open practice on Friday, was actually the Sprint Series uh, season opener. And we had the clinic just before that. So talk about throwing a few people into the wolves. The Sprint Series, yeah. our, our least experienced people, actually jumped onto it first. We had a lot of people on Friday, but it was slick conditions on Saturday. Yeah, uh, we were <laughs> a few things went against us in those few weeks that were open. Um, one, just the weather. It was either rainy or really cold. Right. And if it wasn't either of those, we didn't have a lot of sun. So there was a ton of cloud cover. Right. On top of that, the first event being sport carts with a super hard tire doesn't help our, <laughs> help our cars at all either. Um, definitely took a little bit more finesse than usual to get the sport cart around the joint that day. And um, we were both instructors in the clinic, so we were trying to... Um, figure it out as much as we can but the end of the day as you go a little bit yeah yeah people were asking us questions and i'm kind of like i'll tell you in 10 minutes when i'm back <laughs> off track but um i think regardless of what kind of cart you're driving those first few weeks are a lot of just get around the joint and try to hit your marks yeah. it was so little about speed and that was a tough part about the sprint series guys was everyone's always trying to go faster i'm like it's be a little bit slower and it's going to pay off huge yeah so it was definitely a finesse game as you said there in the, in the sprint series and and in the first sprint series we had uh, actually one of the more experienced drivers for that sprint series 2r driver uh spencer russell yeah. knock it out of the park now he's a, we say 2r that means he can only do two races he actually got second in the, uh, the sprint series championship last year so he went and he did the the whole mcgill he swept it he did pole a heat race win and he got the main win uh, just in front of uh, james leaser who got second, and Randy McKee, who actually uh, uh, had a, a pretty good run uh, from a little bit further back. Um, Spencer can only do two races, so he's done after that first win there. He can actually do one more race, but uh, he's not going for those points. Um, and then uh, in the points championship, uh, coming out of that first round, it was actually Leaser, uh, Randy McKee, and uh, Donnie Clark, who actually all tied for first out of that first round. Yeah. Um, shout out to Owen Lerman, uh, who got a heat win, I believe it was. Uh, and then uh, Ronnie Swaim Jr. and Ayrton DeMoss, who uh, finished out with the, the first round as the top five guys. Um, round number two was just this last weekend, and you could there was definitely a difference in grip, um, yeah. but we still saw the same core group of drivers at the front. Right, and that was kind of the neat part was 
I really thought there was going to be more of a big variable with the track uh, being so slick as it was in round one. But as the day went on, I'm like, no, the guys that are up front should be the ones up front. Um, and it was that same group moving on to the second round. So group got better, and I think everyone else got a little bit more comfortable with the layout as well. I mean, not too big of a change going from Classico counter to Grande counter. And at the end of the day, everyone was still trying to learn this top section of the track right here. Right. So the rest of it was pretty familiar, but that top five that we're seeing right now, it's uh, Ronnie, Seth, Randy, James, Donnie, and then uh, just out of the top five right now is uh, Tony Waika. That's going to be the, the solid group of guys I think we're going to keep seeing up there. So. Yeah. Well, and, you know, Tony Waika, you mentioned they're just outside. He's actually in a four-way tie for what would essentially be second. Right. And that has to do with him getting the W. He just won his first sprint series. He was the one who could come from behind. He took the win in round number two. Um, Seth Willips was right on his back bumper. Uh, he had a decent round number one, and uh, he actually picked up P2 for round number two. And uh, Ronnie Swaim, who's tied with Willits right now with one, we actually took uh, one drop for the two rounds. Swaim, a 290 day. Uh, he had a very solid uh, top five for the first round. So Swaim's having the best year right now. Willits p2 as far as total points uh these guys aren't back on track until march uh, a little bit of a wait yeah. yeah with all the competition carding we got going on in the next month uh, the sprint series guys uh if you're just a sprint series driver you're actually not going to be on course again until the uh second weekend of march um so yeah I, this is going to be a bit of a wait for you guys unless you end up running in the super series which i do expect a good number of people to do um the next thing we have on the docket is the Ironman series. It actually shares its day with the Super Series. We open uh, that whole day with the Ironman. That happened in the third weekend of uh, January. Um, and the difference with that very first uh, Ironman is we do have that green-white checkered qualifying. Probably one of the toughest qualifying sessions there is because the, the tires are cold. They're obviously really hard. It's yeah. been sitting all night, and it's go. There's no, no warm-up. It's just green-white checkered, first and that's the car you're going to run. First session on track. It, uh, yeah, round one of the Ironman has definitely one of the tougher qualifiers. Um, and you can see a few people weren't too happy waiting in line to get gridded up afterwards. They could kind of <laughs> tell where they're at. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it was still an hour-long race, and a little bit of strategy came into play for some of these guys. Yeah, for sure. I mean, just some of the cats weren't able to make it happen in qualifying, but would come back later to do well. Right. And one of those guys, actually the cat who won, Sam Hunt, yeah. uh, he didn't qualify terrible, but he did slide back a little bit and then had to work his way back up uh, to get to the front. Um, actually, the guy getting pole position in that two-lap qualifier was a, a New York guy, a fly-in driver, Andrew Wood. He was actually able to get the, uh, the pole position in that and then would go on to finish second uh, in the Ironman race. Again, one of those dudes who's not going to be here all year, stealing a few points from a few other people. Right. Um, and then the completing the podium there for Ironman, Paulo Franca, uh, which I talked about in the, the event preview. He was going to be a guy to watch. And uh, not only did he get that podium, but he actually ended up getting some hardware later in the day in the Super Series, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, but again, going back to those points, like I said, uh, Woody's not running the whole season. He's second in the standings. Um, he's going to be you know dropped pretty quick because he's not running the whole year. Right. But you've got some of the usual suspects there at the sharp end. Uh, you know, we got uh, Paulo Franca, like I said, is third. Sam Hunt's leading. Uh, Chris Ware to fourth, and Sean Fight fifth. Uh, the big thing I want to point out with those guys, they all got up there to lead a lap. Crucially, actually, Ware to getting out there to lead a single lap, and that yeah. grabbed him the, the three bonus points. Bonus points that you carry on from every round to the very end. So with uh, those small little things, as you said in strategy, grabbing some bonus points, getting the sharp end. We'll be curious to see who keeps playing that game a little bit to make sure you grab that uh, the bonus point. We've seen that the bonus points can make a big difference at the end of the championship. It's uh, there's definitely a lot of calculating you can see going on with these guys on track, and I think some of the uh, the better at it would be um, Melissa Yanni, who's been on the podium uh, numerous amounts of times to Ironman, former Super Series champ, uh, Miguel, uh, another Ironman winner and champ, I believe, and then also a couple Chris, times, yeah, Chris Huerta. Those are the, oh, and excuse me, Taylor Hayes. Can't leave him out. Right. <laughs> but those are probably the top four that I see always paying attention on track and doing a really good job of making sure they're filling into the pits and when they need to and kind of even letting people go by at the times they have to and not trying to hold on to the lead, but just trying to stay with the pack. And with these, 
you know, veteran still in the, the hunt and it only being one round, I'm curious to see where I'm going to see uh, Sam Hunt end up at. Right. Definitely got a lot of pace, and I'm not surprised that he uh, he won an Ironman because you need some speed for that and consistency, and that's what Sam is. Right. Um, but I'll be curious to see as the year goes on if he's going to have the experience or pick up the experience like the others do in terms of the uh, strategy and whatnot. Yeah, for sure. The speed is there, and yeah, grabbing a win is not too big of a surprise to see Sam Hunt up there. But as you say, is he going to be able to turn that into a championship around a bunch of other veterans that know that strategy side of things? Uh, certainly in the the only uh, endurance arm for, for our, our stuff out here. These guys are the ones who are always at the sharp enduring our machismo 12 hour and these deals here. These guys won't race for another two and a half weeks or so so uh, for the Ironman we'll see uh, we'll see what they do at that point uh, which we will preview a little bit later. Uh, next thing on the docket it happened later that day it was the Super Series it was the season opener big big year for, uh, for the Super Series 10th season for the Super Series kind of making a big deal about that um, and uh, once again it was on classical counterclockwise we're dumping in the yeses uh, on the, the beginning of the lap yeah. um, overall I, I mean from both the sprint and and super and all that the racing was pretty damn good I mean it was it was a lot of side by side and yeah it was it was interesting to uh, to see what would happen uh, at the very end and again uh, you had kind of mentioned with the Ironman it was it was the veterans that did rule the day right I mean you can still see a lot of the uh, a lot of the drivers throughout the day is still trying to adjust to the track and not only driving but driving I think they figured it out pretty damn quickly I yeah. think the biggest thing was the racecraft right um for instance as you're coming up the hill through Scandi and you go from well in the forward direction be five to four and you're going to that top section you kind of get this if you will half-assed run and then it starts to bleed away as you straighten back out and people still kind of hoping they have the run for it and it's it's just a different corner and that was where uh you'd see the normal cats up there and then they'd either have a lock up or a, a, a bad move and that's what kind of would hold them back but i think that was a tougher theme for everyone was just getting the craft down a little bit more that day yeah so, figuring out how to race on this new track i mean right. they don't want to drive they don't want to race but now they got some some new weapons to deal with you know exactly, they had the hairpin yeah. in the center uh, up here at top the old turn four the corner curve uh, all those different things trying to figure out how how do i how do I capitalize on mistakes? How do I set things up? Right. And it was interesting, the, interesting to see the best in the business there to, to make things happen. Um, like I said, overall, I thought the racing was really good. Uh, and at the end, it started uh, kind of filtering out a little bit, and it was uh, Chuck Eichland, old Charles Eichland, getting the, uh, the the fourth win of his career. Uh, he picked up the A main win. He's not a full season guy, which totally bums me out. But uh, yeah. he uh, he got the W. Um, and uh, he's actually tied uh, with Taylor Hayes for sixth on the all-time list for wins right there. Okay. Uh, Charles, maybe you ought to run the entire year, buddy. <laughs> Add a few more. Um, but then also, uh, like I said earlier, Franca, he actually uh, picked up a podium in the Ironman, and he yeah. did it again uh, with a second place, a hard-fought second place uh, in, the, uh, in the A main. But from third on back, what a battle and actually that last lap I've seen a few different videos of it I can't say that there's a the best way I can describe it is very elbows up uh, yeah. these guys have driven better they've had they've made smarter <laughs> decisions nobody really went above and like you know knocked anybody out of the way per se everyone was able to keep racing but there's definitely some little yeah. BS that happened and we reached out to those drivers and already talked to them but it was definitely last lap racing and when you have you know five or six drivers that close there's gonna be some contact yeah it definitely some people try to hold on to what they have yeah. and, and other people trying to go get it and those two things sometimes clash I see Chuck telling me he's gonna be here at Clasco the Clasco Grand Prix uh, gonna be uh, his next time out here so well, we're there's gonna a few wait. races before then and a few races after so try <laughs> yeah, to make, those, try to make those and actually he's a former winner of the of the GP yeah um, but uh, yeah, so we're gonna have to wait on that one. But he is the point leader, as we said. He's not gonna be running the whole year, so he's uh, he's gonna be quickly heading down the charts. And that means Paulo Franca is our current point leader for the Super Series, 385 to his name. Uh, the guy who uh, shared the podium, 385 for Paulo, 375 for Sean Fight, who is uh, technically second at this point. If you look at it, Adam Nagao was able to rebound from a rough Ironman uh, after a mechanical situation. He had a 367 for fourth. And then another guy who's not running the whole year, John Cambrell, wow. rounds out our top five with 358 in points. Um, it, it's interesting, they're looking at the sharp end. 
you got some cats who not running. There's going to be big, big shoes to fill, big holes in the championship. Yeah. And round two in the middle of February, we're going to start seeing a bit of a shuffle going on there. Now, I'm bummed out to see John's not running a full year and right. Chuck, too. I mean, you got two solid guys that can definitely have more. John Kimbrough actually joining yeah, us right I know. now. It's, it's like nice timing, timing John, yeah. <laughs> um, but both guys are already in the top five and can definitely stay there all year. And um, this is where it starts to get interesting is that fifth to eighth position is a constant rotation of drivers. And, well, shit, last year we saw um, Brayton go from 10th to 5th right. in the final round. Left, so yeah, crazy. That just shows what can happen in one round. But It's very, very tight. I mean, yeah. these guys, it's like any other championship. You've got your veterans. you got your front runners. You can always guarantee that there's there's going to be a battle amongst right. these guys. And uh, in, in the Super Series, we saw them all at the sharp end and in the points – Round one did not disappoint for, for action. No. Uh, I'll be curious to see what happens with Eichlin and Kimbrell slipping down the charts for not running the full season uh, and see who's going to plug them in again. They're going to be uh, doing round two the third weekend of February. Um, but, yeah, that was uh, that was January. That was a good opening round for sport karting for sure. Yeah, two, yeah. two sprint rounds, Ironman, Super, yeah. ton of racing for those guys. February is a little bit different. February is pretty damn hectic. <laughs> and there's none of our events, which is kind of nice, but not the best either. Well, we, got, <laughs> we, got, we got the one, right? We got the one, uh, the Super Series and uh, Iron Man Round 2. Is oh, happen. yeah, that's coming up pretty um, soon. But we're kicking things off at Cal Speed uh, with the competition karting this weekend. Uh, it's not going to be dry. <laughs> so that no. freaking blows. But before we jump into that too much, I do want to thank you guys again for jumping on here. And if you have any questions or like that, throw them out there we've got a ton of cool people uh uh that i don't always see on here i mean sean Bure is watching wow he's giving he us has some time of day. <laughs> nothing else to do right now no thanks thanks guys for hanging out i see angela matheson's on here lloyd mack is on here got zim uh, on there zim's on here the reason why i'm pointing out some of these cats is they are the competition carding side of things brian williams we're going to see him tomorrow um it's it's neat to see you guys jump on here because a lot of what we do uh, on uh, on Cal Speed is the arrive and drive stuff, so it's cool to see the uh, uh, the competition guys jump on here. Yes, Brian Williams, and even though I don't like <laughs> saying the R word, I don't think there's any way I can get out of it now. Those of people who know me know I don't like to talk about it. Well, and I'm not, positive waves will keep it away. I don't I'm know not that's so worried happen. about it because we're not racing this weekend, so <laughs> yeah, we'll be working, working it. Though. We'll be working in it, but I'll drink to that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> But yeah, Tracy Carter's opening round this weekend. Uh, again, it's going to be on the grindy counter course. We're looking forward to it. Getting competition karting back in the swing. And then obviously we're going to have our CSK racing back in as well. Right. A bunch of our uh, 206 drivers going to be hitting the track this weekend. And some of them are going to be having their first experience on a wet track. And, and most likely a downpour from what we're seeing. So. Yeah, I hope not. That's, I mean, <laughs> wet's one thing, but I'm hoping that we don't uh, we don't get a whole bunch of, uh, of uh, the, the hard stuff really, really quick. Um, uh, real quick, uh, Gonzalez, Michael Gonzalez jumping in here and asking if uh, the Reigns on Sprint Series Super does the show go on. That is a negative, Ghost Rider. There is no <laughs> rain racing at all in the, uh, in the uh, arrive and drive stuff uh, for multiple different reasons, uh, primarily because the carts don't freaking work they're uber stiff we already have a softer front compound tire than rear to help out with the balance so even if you threw rain tires out of which we have tested it still does not get the job done um there's not enough flex so and also to be fair i would say that most most of the people that run would not be able to uh <laughs> to negotiate that situation then i think the <laughs> staff would have a hard no against mountain yeah. 40 sets of rain tires yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. that's that's probably the biggest deal so yeah forget that no so I, I i'm not i'm not uh, i'm doing that uh, but going back to the competition stuff as you said tri c carters this weekend uh they've been here for 10 consecutive years now this is gonna right. be their 10th season at tri c is uh, is here just really just boomed the last couple of years with the uh the, obviously the 206 jumping on um seeing a ton of people out here practicing for uh for challenge next weekend which we'll get to in a second yeah. so i'm wondering if that's going to boost the numbers like in ka and whatnot but um, yeah, 10th season for those guys. Um, they're running this weekend. They've actually been doing their SoCal uh, the chill, oh, the challenge chill Challenge over at Adams. Adams. So they've already been kind of keeping things flowing here in the wintertime. That's really cool to see. They had like 50-some-odd entries uh, every round over there. And a lot of names I did not recognize. I mean, I'm not out here on the fence all the time watching. 
and but I do look at my laps a lot, and there's names I just didn't recognize. So if that means we get new new blood in, that's badass. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Um, so those guys are gonna be rolling. Um, if you if you don't know about Tricy, they've got uh, uh, they've got basically a lot of the multi engine stuff. So they do the the micro and, and mini and, and and the tag stuff. But you can run different kinds of engine packages and whatnot. Um, and then they also have, I think, all of the rock classes as well. I think most of those are yeah. broken up. They run the, the four-stroke stuff, a 206 and World Formula. And uh, and if, if you've got an engine type, you can probably go find a class there. Um, you can get more information on Tri-C Carters by uh, going to their website. It's tri-ccarters.org. And they got class lists and stuff like that. For this weekend, again, we're going to be on Grande Counterclockwise. Um, it does look like it's going to be wet, which sucks. Uh, but the racing last year in the wet was once you're out there, once you're doing it, yeah. it you're doing it, and it's it's pretty damn fun. And to your uh, point, that we do have the, our team, the CSK racing team. While I don't want to put a big spotlight on that right, right now, I'm really excited to see some of the new guys coming in from sport karting and in the 206. Not just with us, I saw some new guys in 206 and otherwise yeah. from from uh, other teams. So it's really cool to see those new people come in. Again, Tri-C Carters run this weekend. Uh, looking forward to see how this thing uh, works out. Um, and, and you know what? Shout out to uh, to Nathan and Trisha Thibodeau, who uh, are the the kind of the masterminds of that whole thing. They make right. things happen over there big. And Eric Nelson is also on the board, and everybody else who helps out. That's a lot of work to, to put in. Uh, they are kind of the prelude, or some of the people who are getting ready for Challenge of the Americas uh, next week. Um, they will start with, uh, we'll have open practice here at Cal Speed Wednesday and actually on Thursday. Um, and then they will take things over Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We'll have the Challenge of the Americas. Andy Stegsman puts that on um, with his uh, excellent crew. They are a, a rock program. So they're going to have all of the rock classes from, uh, from micro all the way on up through uh, Master Shifter. Um, and they've got, uh, with the Challenge of the Americas, it's a three weekend series two rounds per weekend yeah. they're running here they run in uh i want to say musselman so it was at tucson uh and then up in sonoma, sonoma. Um, and you can either if you if you do well in their championship you've got uh, uh tickets to the world finals you've also got uh tickets to uh rock the rio for other classes kind of depending on what you're doing um and the one exception to that all rock program is that if you have a ka motor you can also run the 100 cc class that they offer i think they have senior and masters right. also junior as well but i'm not sure on that one um but you can get more information excuse me you can get more information on uh, challenge of the americas at challenge uh he's uh he's got uh what how many years i think i, I think i saw on uh, howden's deal that was like 16 years or something like that i could be wrong i could be wrong right. i want to say it was maybe. like 16 years maybe 12 i don't know. been going a long time yeah. andy's <laughs> andy's a challenge deal so and, yeah the, the, that's that been rolling for a while 110 plus entries for their uh, pre-reg right now so it should be a pretty damn solid show next week um but again uh, they're going to be on the grande counter show uh grande counter um uh configuration um, and as far as the winter series go, it's it's the the thing going on, on the West Coast. Yeah, no, it's definitely a good time. I mean, if you're not wanting to do the club racing, you just want to do the big events, this is where you're definitely going to go get your driver ready and whatnot. Even if you're planning on just doing this one-off race, not running the whole championship. If you're in SoCal, you're going to probably enter this race. Get your cart shaken down. It may not be the right motor, but get you in the cart, on the track, go get some racing happening again. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm pretty looking forward to this. I think it's going to be a ton of fun. Looking forward to having a big event here again. And then also just, I'm looking forward to seeing how this track's going to race with some competition cards. Right, yeah, with the, the wet this weekend, uh, if you're looking at the 10-day, next weekend's looking pretty sharp. Next weekend's looking pretty sharp. I know that uh, when you when you schedule a, uh, a race out here in the early part of uh, uh, early part of the year in California, you never know what you're going to get. And the challenge has gotten hosed, <laughs> no pun intended, a couple of times. It looks like it's going to be. I don't want to, you know, mess anything up. But it looks like it's going to be all right next week. Um, so to your point, looking forward to seeing how things race in the Drywood Challenge next week. Um, after that, on the competition carding docket, it is LAKC, their 15th year. They've been doing this thing uh, since the inception of yeah. Cal Speed. Um, those guys, uh, again, this is for some of the people who don't already know. LAKC runs uh, predominantly Scusa classes. Um, and uh, if you're basically trying to do anything from the Pro Cards up Pro Tour or just trying to work on that whole package, uh, 
they've basically got it going on. So it's uh, micro all the way up uh, through the shifter stuff, whether it be the 175, they got stock on and stuff there. Um, but they also have uh, a micro, uh, excuse me, uh, a kick cart. So they, right. uh, you can, if you've got a kick cart, five to seven years old, you can jump in with the LAKC guys. They are going to be on track the fourth weekend of, am I doing that right? Yeah, I believe it's the fourth weekend of February, last weekend of February. Yeah. Um, and that is, uh, that's going to be a huge, huge event. It's uh, actually going to be on the Grande configuration. So same thing we're doing right now, but going the other direction. Um, very, very first uh, event that's going to be in the four direction. So the up the hill and everything like that's all brand new to all of us. Uh, so that's going to be pretty damn well, to be fair, I have done about three half laps in this front section here on the forward, uh, forward deal in a, in a sport car, in a rental car. Um, it, it look, I think it's going to be kind of cool. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. The uh, They're going to be the very first ones to touch the Grande circuit. Um, uh, and again, it's going to be really, really big. And I think a lot of that's because they are immediately before the Pro Tour. So where we already have a pretty busy Saturday practice and stuff yeah. like that. We're going to see that thing swell, is my guess. Uh, and the talent from all over the place. I think that's probably the part that uh, maybe I'm really, really excited about. Derek and I are going to be running uh, LAKC. I'm running Masters uh, uh, KA, and he's running the senior. Uh, senior. And getting just, it's going to be deep fields, and it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. It's a and good chance for us to go out and embarrass ourselves in front of everyone. So <laughs> yeah, the biggest nice. show we possibly can. Yeah. Right? Gonna, hey, look at how terrible we are. Uh, the uh, the cool thing about that, too, and you had actually said this in our preview show in December, is I think between Challenge and definitely with Pro Tour uh, coming up, and then we'll see at LAKC, there's going to be people who maybe have never been here before, maybe have never been to Cal Speed, because we haven't had these many big events going on at one time. Excuse me, but, uh, or, or people haven't been here in a long time. So it's going to be really neat to see, like you said about the racing on uh, at Challenge, just again, see racing on the new Cal Speed. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be, uh, everyone's going to, kind of already figured out how to go this direction around the track especially with how busy uh, Sundays have been I believe there's only one or two Sundays before uh, we go one, Grande one, one yeah so you got one week of practice before we go um, racing on Grande Ford yeah and Deep then down. right after that you got Pro Tour so at least get your uh, you know grind your teeth a little bit at LKC get the club <laughs> stuff going and be ready for Pro Tour if you're going to do that but it's going to be uh, interesting seeing how quickly everyone picks up the forward direction and, again, seeing how that part of the track is going to race for us. Yeah, well, uh, the other thing, too, like we've put in, what now, a couple weeks, well, no, damn near a month on the counterclockwise direction, at least yeah. the top portion, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Long Beach and Horseshoe have only had so much time. Right. Um, Which is funny because those have actually felt pretty damn good considering the rest of the track right. that you've been on yeah well and that's i guess that's my point like with long beach and in horseshoe feeling pretty damn good out of the gate i'm i'm really interested to see how the going the other direction right you know right out of the gate is it gonna be awesome is the rubber gonna be in the wrong spots do yeah. we have to figure out how to you know find it it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of fun to kind of check uh check out the new cal speed that direction um, and again, with the the amount of talent that's going to be out here, um, total selfish on this. Th it's just <laughs> total, totally proud about having this kind of stuff out here at uh, at Cal Speed. I've uh, been wanting nothing but big events here since I since I got here in 2011. I know you right. you share that kind of thought, so stoked about having that. Um, and again, you want more information about LAKC? You go to LAKC.org. Um, I think I heard registrations open uh, for them. Uh, I think so. Already, I totally, yeah. uh, totally biffed it on that. But the Tri C registration for this weekend, I think, is open till five. Pre reg is already closed for challenge. Uh, registration for LAKC is open, which I have yet to do. So I should probably think about uh, making that happen. Right. Uh, and then, like we talked about, LAKC does precede Pro Tour on the exact same configuration. Pro Tour is going to be here. Uh, we we will. They'll actually be racing in March, and we will talk about it uh, at the end of February. But yeah. first practice day will be February twenty eighth. So we're kind of sneaking in here in this show. But February twenty eighth, they're going to be moving in just before that. That's going to be the first day of practice. They're going to go through the the March second weekend there. Uh, like I said, same track as LAKC. Uh, going to be really interesting to see how the track develops. You got basically nothing but scoos of stuff going on all the way through. 
uh, with the LAKC and then right on the next one. So same kind of tire, a lot of kind of stuff. We'll be curious to see how our track uh, holds up as well as takes that rubber where the grip is. It's still only going to be March or February. Yeah. So we'll be serious, uh, seriously up in the air as far as the grip goes. I mean, <laughs> it's. I'm definitely happy with what the track is now. If I had to race on the track right now, I'd be like, oh, I'm totally fine with that. Um, definitely been a lot of uh, MG rubber laid down. Has, hasn't been a ton of rocks out here lately, or at least the most consistent rubber has been MG. Um, yeah, it's. I think it's going to change a chunk as soon as you start going the other direction for sure. But only way to find out is to get out here and drive it. So right. definitely mark your calendars when we're doing these track changes and make a point to come out here and get ready. Uh, for these next big events right now i see uh sean beer on there on a scale of one to t uh one to ten one being derek and ten being sean i assume he means sean fight yeah not sean beer uh how successful do you feel the first events have been definitely a derek well, they're <laughs> <laughs> obviously the best because we've been putting them on right there you go is that you saved me no. for myself <laughs> <laughs> uh man it's pretty good the uh yeah so actually overall things have been pretty damn smooth on the uh arrive and drive side yeah. um again you know, like to see what you guys think from our standpoint it seems to be pretty damn good considering with the the new track and everything like that but uh yeah i'll be uh, really really looking forward to some of the other configurations every single time we go to a new track a new new configuration it feels like we're going to a completely different track no, it, there's definitely a lot of learning going on on our side right now. Like, um, for instance, all the back and forth that we had with people in the paddock um, in terms of when the track just opened and we're trying to figure out barriers and, and how to place stuff and whatnot, we're definitely receptive to all of it. But at the end of the day, it was us going out there and, and driving it a bit, seeing what we think, and also just kind of letting stuff, uh, the days go. Right. And kind of having to pay attention to how it works. So between seeing how we're going to place tracks and whatnot and now seeing how cards are reacting to the corners been a lot of back and forth but i th definitely think it's all going in the right direction and yeah i'm still here every practice day you'll definitely bump into mike too let us know what you think and we can kind of go from there and and at least have a back and forth on why we're doing stuff and why do you think it should change or whatever but yeah for sure i mean always it's, it's definitely open door policy if you guys got ideas or thoughts or whatever good or bad uh i like hearing all the good stuff all the time but we get better by hearing stuff you don't like you know we're nobody's perfect and we're definitely going to keep working on things and making things better as best we can but your guys feedback is a big part of that um and i i want to make sure we don't forget about the non-competition karting uh event we have in february we will have the iron man and super series round number two uh in the third weekend of february iron man's actually already sold out Iron yeah. Man sold out last weekend. There's only 30 spots available. We only do one run group. But uh, Iron Man sold out last weekend. Um, we won't have qualifying this time. The pole Man, the guy leading everybody away, is going to be out in the gal. He actually had a mechanical issue, unfortunately, at the previous one. So Nagao will be on a pole going away from that. That's how we're going to start the day. Uh, I believe it's the 16th of February. Uh, and then uh, right after that, same day, Super Series, round number two. Plenty of spots left for that. Uh, a lot of the guys uh, waiting on that one. We just got done with a ton of racing, so people holding off on uh, getting signed up. But Super Series round number two will be in the third weekend of February. Um, and like we talked about before, I'm looking to, looking forward to seeing if it's going to be another one-off guy or if it's going to be a full-season driver and really how the championship shakes up. Um, and uh, what's neat is they actually run, when we run Grande Counter, a modified uh, a modified circuit right we we right. do the bypass obviously but then we also do short beach instead of the long beach so it's a little bit different for those guys um and the racing's always good uh with the super serious guys on uh, on grande counter that being said if any of you got competition carters want to try to get a leg up on the tracks go do an arrive drive event <laughs> and, <laughs> right you know start to figure it out a little bit sooner some of the corners will be a bit different but definitely majority of the tracks are going to be the same so maybe get a leg up on that so and, when we go clockwise it's exactly the same yeah there you go but they're a hell of a lot of fun john crow did uh did one last year he did our super series uh made the ama too made the ama in his first time that's out. actually a big deal yeah <laughs> you got new driver coming to do that, yeah but when uh when john crow is battling for 15th or so that kind of shows you uh the depth in the fields that we have out here for the drive and drive so if you're looking to spend 
135 bucks to receive her. Come out, give it a shot. It's a ton of fun, and you get some good seat time to get ready for these next two track layouts coming up. Yeah, for sure. And, and again, like that that situation there, if you are uh, uh, with the way things fall, Grande Counter is not going to be back around. I want ooh, we may not be on Grande Counter again this year. I had to look back at the that's, schedule. I think we're just on it once. Yeah. Actually. So uh, your last chance to run Grande Counter will be actually be with the uh, the Super Series and, uh, and Ironman there in the uh, third weekend of February. And like we said before, Sprint Series is actually uh, off uh, for the month of February. They will not be back on until the second week of March. So sad for the Sprint, but you guys will be back on a monthly basis once we get to there. Um, yeah, like like uh, we try to, we, we've said multiple times, appreciate you guys hanging out, giving us that feedback, always looking forward to that kind of stuff. Um, we're going to be trying to uh, do these things every month, last Thursday of every month. Uh, we'll actually upload this to YouTube tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, we do a bit of a screen capture deal. We upload upload this to YouTube, so if you guys miss the live stuff, you can go and watch it afterwards. And then uh, producer uh, Sarah is going to try to turn that into a podcast, possibly, so you can just listen to it in your car, as if you wanted to do that uh, <laughs> any more uh, than you're already doing now. Uh, we're going to maybe look into that kind of stuff, just to make it so you guys get as much information as possible. Um, what I'm really looking forward to, I think, is uh, is next one of these is going to be that Thursday of Pro Tour. So yeah. we'll have just finished with uh, the optional practice, the, uh, the the practice day there, unofficial practice, if you will. And maybe we get some guests. Yeah, we're... Uh, maybe someone wants to hang out with us for an hour or whatever. Now that we're getting, uh, getting into the competition card inside of things a little bit more as the year's starting to get rolling, um, hoping to get some guests. Uh, already talking to a few people that are interested in and grabbing another chair and hanging out with us for an hour or so. And also maybe looking at a few teams to see if they want us to throw us uh, any apparel or whatever. Oh yeah, you know we're looking as if a sponsor, if you will. Yeah, you want to be highlighted for the for this segment. I mean, it's really going to do a lot for your for your numbers. If you yeah. want to if you want to go from having <laughs> I don't know ten to fifteen people under your tent to, to maybe like, sixteen or or <laughs> ten. Yeah, yeah, maybe you lose. <laughs> maybe a few. you have too many people under your tent. You want to bring those down? Why don't you hook us up with a couple of uh, shirts? We'll wear those shirts. Yeah, give really us some plugs right now. But, uh, but all, all seriousness, yeah, yeah. Like, like he said, uh, we're going to try to get some uh, uh, some guests in here, get their perspective on, on the racing, different things that are going on, different championships and different events. Um, but for sure, we want to also highlight some of the teams out there that are uh, that are doing things. And yeah, We like free shirts. Free shirts are cool. Yeah, so, I'm tired of wearing a CalSpeed one. I could <laughs> use another one right now. Nice. <laughs> so uh, hit us up. We actually, I think we've already got an idea for the next one. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I'll have to wait and see right now. Yeah, hit us up. We'd love to wear some different apparel. Uh, as he said, the blue blue doesn't look good on him at all. <laughs> uh, you know, all that being said, uh, we'll leave it for just a couple seconds. Uh, if you guys want uh, some other questions or anything like that to get answered, anybody coming out for maybe uh, a challenge or like that, hit us up. If you guys have questions, you can hit us up via phone, Facebook, shoot us an email, mike at calspeedcarding.com. Uh, Derek at calspeedcarding.com and obviously you can uh, just do the info at calspeedcarding.com if you want to do that. Our phone number 951-506-9363. Hit us up. Got a question? We'll, we'll try to answer it. Um, all that being said, pretty awesome first month. Yeah. Really awesome second month coming up. We're trying to do some things, dress stuff up and really kind of become a new a new Cal speed or kind of the, 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 the reboot if you will. It does kind of feel a little bit different, but overall, how how's the last thirty days feel to you? Uh, stressful. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was definitely um, a little bit of a you know a rush uh, program for a second with um, the redo, uh, the resurface, and all the construction we we're doing. Kind of pushed into the uh, towards the end of the year, kind of quick uh, right. late, excuse me. But once the track got placed, I'm like, all right, the track's back now, and it's honestly been a ton of fun since then. But it is, uh, we were seeing this a few months ago when we got the 2019 calendar plan. It is going to be grabbing gears the entire way through right. this year. It's so many weekends. Um, There's not a free Saturday until November. Yeah. It's so nonstop. Basically, after the years, at the end of the racing season, we're going to have some weekends open. But until then, we're just game on between arriving, driving, competition, karting, and if this is a, this last uh, 30 days is a preview of what's to come, I'm honestly pretty excited. I think it's going to be a really good year for Cal Speed. And just for uh, competition carding and carding in general. So. Yeah, no, I, you know, I can't, uh, I can't echo that enough. I, I really think this is going to be an awesome year. 
Uh, we've got our season openers done with the arriving driver. We're getting ready to do season openers for the next several weeks. Uh, opening things up for Challenge, opening things up for, for Pro Tour. Obviously, Tri-C and LAKC opens uh, things up this next month. Um, yeah, pretty damn excited. Also, guys, if uh, you're on uh, mostly the arriving drive carters, if you want to come see a, some awesome racing, come hit up one of the clubs or Absolutely. Coda or, you know, Challenge of the Americas or even Pro Tour coming up. Just come up, buy a pit pass, and hang out for the day. And chances are we'll be here hanging out too, just checking out some of the racing. But if you want to see the other side of karting, which I don't uh, think a lot of you have just seen, you know, some pictures of. I don't see a ton of you out here on the open practice days or for the club days. But come experience it. It's a ton of fun. And yeah, I think you'll enjoy it a ton. So. Yeah, echo that 100%. Do any of you, if you're looking to get into a competition cart, that's the best way to find out what you want to do. Come out, watch a race, check it out. Yeah. Before going and buying the prettiest thing you can find, go talk to some teams. Go, you know, experience it. See what you want to do. Um, but, uh yeah, I think that's that's I think all that's I got. It for right? tonight, yeah. yeah. So, uh, hey guys, uh, once again, thanks for uh, for hanging out with us a little bit, um, watching and interacting with us, uh, or if you're catching after the fact on Facebook, maybe you're a little bit late to the show or on YouTube. Uh, for Derek Escobel, I'm Mike Smith. We'll see you guys at the track. Bye, guys. Thank you.